in the snow. Yeah, and that stuff. was something. But we're lucky to actually to have yeah, yeah, in the snow. We're lucky to have something in very close now in New Milford. So it's easier to train. We have good bowling machines and a really good setup within Connecticut Sports Arena. A lot of the cricketing countries like Pakistan, India, Australia, England, New Zealand, all the South Africa. Uh, it just amazes me the amount of like you know, thinking and creative they had in that show is amazing. <laughs> Hey there, cricket lovers. Welcome back to a very special episode here on the Reverse Scoop channel. It's our first episode of a new series, Rising Future Stars. And boy, do we have a star for you today. This star I've personally known since his childhood days. And the first time I saw him, I knew that this guy, this kid was going to be some player. Today, I'm bringing you to introduce you to someone who is... Again, has trained under the watchful eyes of the Milford Cricket Club and Jay Abai under Jay Singh under his early days. He's part of the U.S. under-19 team as well as other minor leagues teams. We're going to talk about his journey, so I'm going to bring him in without further ado, guys, as you guys can see on my screen. His name is Raman Dar. Raman, welcome to the Reverse Scoop, brother. How are you doing? How's everything? Good. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me. Doing good, man. Doing good. Just trying to grind and you know just living absolutely man so t tell me about early cricketing journey Ramon. let's let's just get into it right away right i want to talk to you first about your earliest childhood memories and how did you start cricket like what as far as you think back of it what, what comes to mind so taking back to the old days i am from originally stanford connecticut that's where i started off my cricket basically so my dad he used to play tape ball cricket a lot and he used to play in all these tournaments and all we had a, a little field called Lyoni park back in stanford and the very home of heart of stanford we used to just play on the side you know a little like kids uh my dad's friends they also had kids so we also like all just played tape ball on the side just getting in like love with the game, getting in love with the game. And just the passion grew from there and just looking up to him. And from there, just really started. Yeah, man, you come from a cricket family, right? I mean, your brother, your dad, your uncle, everybody played cricket. So from your very early days, you were around cricket. Is that fair to say from like, as far as you can think back? Oh, yes, for sure. I mean, my dad played all throughout. I mean, till now, he still sometimes plays. But our brother also plays, even the younger one plays. So yeah, pretty much yeah, cricketing family throughout. So I mean, it was easy to kind of catch on to it since it's so accessible, you could say it's there. So like, yeah, it wasn't that hard to like catch yeah, on to. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. I mean, I, I personally have gotten out to your dad many times in our <laughs> club and league cricket in the old days, you know, when I used to play. So I know how wily of a left arm spinner your dad is. And uh, I'm sure he's still playing. He was probably one of the fittest dudes even when he left here, you know, just to just to give the viewers a little bit of a glimpse into, into your dad's story of, you know, how great of a left arm spinner and a batter he is all right now let's dive into your early trainings i want to kind of uh, dive into Raman, coach jay singh and a little bit of the trainings that you had with him and the impact because obviously where the academy has gone off to now when you were part of it about maybe 10 12 years ago a little bit of your experience from back then just to give the viewers some insight um yes uh coach jay singh he played a very like vital part in my career so far, we used to, I remember we used to, in Stanford, there was like a basketball gym and we literally just, there were nets and we just like pulled out the nets because there was not like really facilities here. I mean, now there are, but like back then there were barely any like indoor facilities. So we just used to like roll out the carpet and then pull out the nets and that's where we used to train and stuff. I remember my first actual like competitive tournament that I went to was U15. I think there were nationals in North Carolina and it was for the Northeast region. I was 11 at the time. And that was really the big, like, I was really looking up to it because uh, it was such a big tournament. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to be playing against 14, 15 year old guys. You know, it's going to be really competitive for me. So yeah, going to that tournament, it was a big thing. J by coach J Singh took the Northeast team, a few of the teammates, Garanjeet and all of them were there as well. So it was a, it was a really memorable tournament for me. And that really kicked off my career in some way. That's, you know, it's like a lot of kids start off, right? Because they are where you were 10 years ago, right? So a lot of kids are in that place where they're going to these under 23, under you know 19, under 15 tournaments to try and get to some level of prominence. What message would you, would you have to, to those youngsters right now that are, you know, just starting off their journey 
or training inside the academy, you know, hoping that they can get to the next level? Just the first main thing is self-belief. I think no one else is going to believe you until you really believe in yourself. So self-belief, of course, is the number one thing. And just working hard, man, just wherever you do, you know, you're working, you can't cheat the game. So you just got to work hard, train, just avail your opportunities. Whenever you get an opportunity in any tournament, any games, just whatever game it is, you got to take it 100%, play it with your full heart and try your best. The results will come to your way eventually. Absolutely, man. 100% agree with you there. You know, you have to give your best efforts in everything that you do. You know, that that's the way to achieve success. It's a simple formula, right? You can't cheat the game, as you said. So perfect words there by Rahman. So now let's talk about a little bit of your competitive edge, Rahman. I know like you started off here in Stanford, Connecticut, you know, playing some club cricket, playing some table ball cricket with your dad. And, you know, when did the light bulb go off in the head that, hey, now I can really, you know, play competitively and I can make this my career? Was it when you made a move from um, Connecticut to uh, Texas and Dallas is when that happened or was it before that point? So, I mean, the love of lo love for the game and the passion for the game was, of course, always there. Yeah, like significantly it was when I moved to Dallas. That's when it really started. Uh, I remember there was the under-19 trials for my first year that were, I just came and like a few months later they were going on. For Dallas, like, as you know, it's like year-round cricket. So, like, you get like basically 12 months of cricket here. So that was a really, that was a big blessing for me to come out here and play like all throughout the year, get more cricket rather than getting like what, like five, four or five to six months, like back home in Connecticut. So it was, that was a big thing. And yeah, it really kickstarted from there is because of the US under 19s, the tryouts were there. So got prepared for those. Yeah. From there into the team. And then training was like a like a regular thing here because all the facilities here as well. I and mean, the grounds here, of course, are like amazing. So everything was set like here. Just the move here was for sure a big thing in my career. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm sure like the facilities that you have out there, right? It's day and night from what we get here in the Northeast. In any of the states, you can go to New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Massachusetts. The conditions and facilities aren't as different in the areas, but as you go further out west, the conditions do improve. Why do you think that is? Do you think that's because there are more cricket funding investments going into that area for, for some type of particular reasons? Or do you think it's just they're more cricket enthusiasts out that way that are more involved in the game? I feel like in a way, yes, there's a lot more people here that are like way into the game, as you said, enthusiasts. The weather plays a a part as well since over here it's like 12 months of cricket and then over there it's like very kind of like limited when the winter comes like you can't really play outdoors but yeah in a way i think indoor especially the indoor facilities over here they're good proper facilities and everything over there there are some back home in connecticut they're just very like far like you'd have to drive like one and a half hour to two hours like in the new jersey areas or the virginia areas yeah. you have to drive up there to um, get to those facilities. So that's a bit of a challenge there. We used to do a lot of that, man, in the winter times, taking those two hour yeah. drives out to Jersey and doing some indoor training, but in the snow, yeah, that stuff. was something we're lucky actually to have. Yeah. Yeah. In the snow, we're lucky to have something in very close now in New Milford. So it's easier to train. We have good bowling machines and a really good setup within Connecticut sports arena. You know, next time you come out, you know, definitely, man, you got to come and practice and, Sure. And, and get a hit there because the setup is really nice and the turf field is a big you know, big be, be good to have you yeah big time and you know i'm sure the kids that are training in there would be super happy to see someone like you you know because obviously there's some very very good kids in there man that are looking promising that are very talented you know buyer or the passion you could read it right away onto the field your ability to field the balls at a very early age because i remember you would be on the field for stanford cricket club from probably like five, six years old on. You were diving on point and, and stopping the ball right and left. And and you've maintained that flexibility because I recently saw your video of that catch in the T10, which was insane, by the way. So talk to me about that, man. How, how have you maintained that flexibility? Is that something natural or is it 
obviously takes work with fitness, but how much of it is natural? How much of it is like you actually working to it? I would say uh, I would be lying if I said a lot of it wasn't natural. I guess it is natural, yeah. but of course <laughs> I do work on myself. Like I've been hitting the gym a lot recently, like lifting and stuff. So a lot of it's natural, but of course, like some hard work comes to it. Fielding is uh, yeah, man, I, mean, I always love to do. That's, I mean, something that's the first time I saw you, man, fielding, I was just like, wow, because you were just this little kid diving on point dropping uh, you know stopping balls right stopping balls left so when i saw that catch on the t10 i wasn't particularly surprised right because i know your background and i know the flexibility you had at that early age but for the viewers you know to put you out there that was just an insane watch uh, you know that catch that you took so people that don't know again this is Ramon dar future of u.s cricket and current under 19 u.s player we're having a great conversation with him right now. We're getting into now some of his memorable matches. What are some of your most memorable matches, Ramon? I know you've played under 19 U.S. cricket, played some minor league cricket. You've played some T10 cricket. One one big match, one big memorable one that you think is your favorite by far. I say I'd say one memorable was. I mean, I didn't really I didn't play in that game, but um, in the first U19 year when we went to uh, over to Canada in Kings King City, I believe, and we played the Canada team. And unfortunately we did lose that game and we didn't qualify for the World Cup for the under 19s, but that match was, it was a big learning curve for me because to handle, I wasn't even playing, but I could feel the pressure of everything. Like it was such a big game and like the velocity and like there's basically, there's a lot of Canadian supporters and like very, there weren't as many U.S. supporters. So like to that environment and everything, it, was, it really helped me learn to how to tackle on pressure and stuff. But yeah, it was a, that game, I'd say it was a pretty memorable moment for me. Yeah, and, and I'm sure it taught you as well, right? Like that the hostile environment, even when you're in there, the, the performance is just a process, right? So you have to remember the process that you're, you're working on your daily basis, right? So it, getting into that, right? Obviously, that requires training and requires discipline to be able to consistently repeat that process. Now, for you, obviously, you're going to school as well. You know, you have to train, you have to go out for your tryouts and and meet the team. How do you how do you balance all of this, you know, craziness, you know, in your young life? Because I'm sure you want to also have a little bit of fun. You want to have good time with your friends as well. So, how do you balance everything right now with family and and all as well? It's a bit tough, but. You got to time management is a is a big thing for the classes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take most of my classes online, but uh, now they're mostly like major related. So I'll have to take them in person. So I'll have to really work out when the classes are. And then, of course, my practice. And then, of course, like you have to have fun, too. You can't just be class to cricket and, you know, not have any fun and like hanging out with your friends, spending time. So that's a big thing too. like spending time with your family, with your loved ones, with friends and all that. So. Yeah, just I would say time management uh, is a big thing. Just working out like when you need to do certain stuff, like prioritizing certain things over the other, like which are more important than the other for sure. Yeah. And how do you how do you usually do that? How, like, do you have board in your room per se that you could write on that? Hey, this is what I got to get done today. Like top priority. How do you manage that? Or do you have a calendar just for like young kids that are again? Well, that will go through this in the future or maybe going through it now to give them some advice how to manage and prioritize. I actually do have a whiteboard in my room. I don't use it like crazy, but I do have like big, big events or like anything like major that I know I can't miss out on. I have to prioritize over the other. So write those down, list them out, like which are more important than the other and all that. So, yeah. Awesome. So definitely prioritizing is key. Now, let's talk about your American dream Ramon, I know you want to play at the highest level, play for the U.S. national team. So what's that looking like right now in your head? What do you think is the next step that you have to do, obviously, to, you know, to, for your that's something that's in your control, right? So whatever is in your control, what do you think is your next steps into getting into that team? Obviously, you're already in under 19 setup right now. Your perform, your numbers look amazing. So what's next for you right now? Are you just like, are you in like communicated with at least with U.S. cricket and stuff so to see what's going on? And like, what does that look like right now, communication wise? So communication wise, it's it's whatever trials come and like nationals, for instance, like the U23 nationals happen and all that. So just trying to perform to the best ability that I can in those nationals and whatever, like even any big tournaments that come up, 
of course, like if you perform, your name will be coming up and like under everyone's radar. So that's for sure a priority for what you said, like what's in my control right now. I'm just going to try to like work double hard now, like twice as what I was so I could really prepare for these tournaments, these big tournaments coming up. Because now you see like a lot of players have moved in. A lot of the cricketing countries like Pakistan, India, Australia, England, New Zealand, all these South Africa, all these players have actually moved in now here. So which in which is very good for cricket here because it makes it more competitive, but also it's a bit competitive for the other locals here already. But that's only going to help your game grow because now you have actual competition to worry about. So you would actually have to work on your game even more again. You can't cheat the game, so you'd have to for sure work double hard now. No, I love that mindset, Ramon. I love that mindset because I understand that there's other players coming into into the uh, you know the cricketing sphere, and our local cricket should be the main focus. But again, being around those experienced guys, you know, you get to learn things that you may not learn by being around players that are here. But again, our focus. Should always be on our you know youth development on our local development players and have a system of in sorts place that you know where you can have academy where you'll be able to go and learn from these coaches or or other players they they may not want to be be selected per se for u.s cricket there should be a criteria in place in my opinion but obviously people that are moving from other countries makes it makes it more of a challenge for local cricketers and it's it's been a problem that discussed with a lot of other cricket cricket enthusiast as well as other cricketers let's 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 also now talk about your future as like in cricket right like so what are you doing also as well to have like a backup plan first of all right because you're going to school right now you're going to be doubly working hard on cricket and also have a school <clears> thing so what's the backup plan if cricket doesn't pan out so yes i am going to school i'm pursuing cybersecurity as my uh, major that's the backup plan or yeah, that's the backup plan for now. So just trying to get a degree as well, along with pursuing cricket. So I mean, of course, it's going to be a task, like a tough task to handle. But if you put your mind to it, I feel like you could achieve anything. And working hard will get you the results. I mean, it may take longer than you expected. But I feel like the man above always has a plan. And just trying to work hard, do my part at least, and um, let it in the hands of the man above and to take care of everything. So I'm pretty confident in that. I personally have no doubts that you know, we'll see you in, in, in the national U.S. team very soon and inshallah. can't wait to, to come watch your games, man, inshallah. And, and you know, make, inshallah, make man. everybody proud inshallah. that's been part of your journey. Now, let's talk about like some, you know, obviously milestones that you want to hit in cricket. You Once you get to U.S. cricket and what are your goals, obviously, to then make impact into the world, right into the bigger scheme of things? What's what are you thinking in the future to make an impact on? Do you have a cause that's very close to your heart that you would like to support that you want to talk about? For the uh, I would say for my future nurses, of course, playing all these big leagues. I mean, of course, after uh, representing the national side, like the, that's my first priority. Um, representing the nation, of course, that takes pride and honor. So that's of course the first priority. And then of course, all these leagues, now we see even more leagues are coming. It's crazy amount of opportunity now for all these, all the cricketers. So all these big leagues playing in some, even some of them, not all of them if you want to play, but even if getting the opportunity playing some of them, performing, even getting my name out there to get picked at even bigger leagues, hopefully. But that's just the process. I mean, everything in shall hopefully will fall into place. Inshallah, man. So like for minor and major leagues, what's the... What's your plan right now that you're thinking? Do you? I know you're already part of a minor league team, right? So what does yeah. that pathway look like? Is it is it that you just go tryouts or how does that work? So for minor league, they did have tryouts, and so that's kind of how I got into it. I've I've had three three or four changes in minor league team. Let's see for this year who I I played for Exforia this year. Last year I was playing for uh, Michigan, and the year before that the Mustangs. Yeah, so you've moved around in the minor league system. Is that largely due to lack of opportunity or just different teams acquiring you from from the other oh uh, yeah so i mean different roles also in that you know so a lack, kind of lack of opportunity and of course like fitting into different roles of teams like whichever whichever team needs me better in that role basically it is nice man and and what you prefer to obviously open and you're a an off-spin bowler correct yes you still bowl ramon or did you turn a leg spin yet? I don't know. You <laughs> no. a bit of both. 
Yeah. So off spin, I mean, in club cricket over here, of course, but I bowl, uh, do bowl, but and of course, like big games and stuff, of course, like you only in big cricket, you only have one ma major thing you're doing that you do, which is batting for me. So that's the thing I prioritize and focus on. And then, of course, it's a backup option off spin. But if, if necessary, if need, I'm there to give a few overs as well. So whatever the team needs. What about your keeping skills, man? And let's let's go with a little bit there. I don't know if people know how good of a keeper you are. You still keep these days? No, I mean, keeping has been... Uh, Keeping, I feel like keeping is the thing that you actually do need to practice on for sure because it requires technique and stuff. Haven't been really keeping lately. That That's not a bad thought. I'm um, starting keeping again, to be honest. Hey, I mean, you're an opening bad, bro. You should just put, put a little time aside onto the keeping. I think you can, you know, change a lot of the perceptions. That's just my opinion because you just got your natural fielder, natural athlete, natural, you know, hand eye coordination. So it's going to be very natural to you either way, as I've seen in the past. Just a little bit that I think we talked about your milestones. All right. So let's talk about some U.S. cricketing insights. Like I, I want to know from you, Ramon, some positives and some negatives on both sides. Like what, where does the U.S. cricket need to improve a little bit, areas of growth, as well as some good positives that U.S. management is doing to help players out? What USA is cricket, USA cricket is doing well. I mean, first thing, we have the World Cup coming in our home. You know, that's a big step in USA cricket. That's first. And also the Olympics, I think, is in 2028, I believe, is the Olympics also. Yes. And we're also in that. So those are big steps, I feel like, for uh, USA cricket, which will change the game and which will make the game more popular in the U.S., which we need more locals to get into the game. And that's I feel like that's the most important thing, first of all, to have the local people into the game so that everyone's aware that there's a new game here in the U.S., and it is a land of opportunity, you know, and it's a lot of diversity here in the U.S., of course, like everyone knows. And so I, th I don't think it should be too long before cricket makes a name for itself here in the U.S. Do you, do you think, think that we need to we need to obviously have, you know, cricket in schools and stuff like that? But that's the thing still a very long ways away. There's still some school cricket here. But how do you suggest that, you know, U.S. cricket approaches this growth? Is it to first go from these league systems and the money that gets made that money gets put into the system or do you focus on grassroots first and build up from there because there's two viewpoints right one viewpoint is obviously to get the big leagues in get the big business in and through that business the money that it generates is going to trickle down to you know these local leagues and local communities for cricket or do you go the other way and start totally at the grassroots level which i think has been you know not focused on it's it's not a top priority for I don't think any U.S. cricketer just to go focus on that grassroots. But what is what is your thoughts on it? I mean, uh, with the recent major league, it kicked off. I think it was a really big success, even for USA cricket, yeah. because of course it was popularized the game, in the U.S. basically, and it was a lot of like a lot of eyes were on this tournament. So I think with these big tournaments coming in play here, it will eventually boost the grassroots because a lot of these, a lot of money is coming into the game now. A lot of eyes are coming into the U.S. People know oh, a lot of crickets being played. Again, a lot of a lot of the big players that are moving in here. So a lot of eyes are being set here now for cricket in the U.S. So I think it's only up from now. There's room for improvement, of course, always. So I think USA is doing a USA cricket is doing a good job now of you know hand, handling all this and getting their name out there into the into the ICC basically to yeah absolutely i mean there's a big market here as well right so i know there's going to be a lot of funding and a lot of investments coming here a lot of IPL owners are investing here so a lot of opportunities for for youngsters to to get ready for and as long as they get to see this opportunity and they get communicated that hey this opportunity is on the horizon I'm sure the, the kids that are at an early age, they would look to develop themselves a bit more. But I'm sure somebody that in your case, right, when you were young, you loved the game. You loved the passion of the game, right? But you didn't really worry about, hey, if there's an opportunity there for me or not. You just loved the game and you played it. Kids these days, obviously, they're, you know, as they're getting into more and more modernized world. They want to make logical choices more and more and more, right? So it kind of drifts them away when they don't see opportunities in front of them, even though they could be really great at it. So how do these, like, you know, leagues communicate this to the youngsters that, hey, this is the pathway 
that you got to take from an early point on because I feel at this point it's not communicated and the kids don't know, hey, this is the steps I got to do to get to that next level. And that's why, you know, conversations such as these are going to be valuable to those kids because they'll be able to get an idea by just listening to this conversation that, hey, Raymond did it this way. So I can have a, a a vision or a pathway in front of me to follow. So what do you what do you think that you want to say to the, those kids? I feel like, first of all, self again, I'll say self improvement. Just working hard and waiting for your opportunity. I feel like no matter what happens, like an opportunity will come your way in like any national tournament or even like a club game or anything. Anyone can see you promote your name or something. So I feel like working hard and like improving your game will really help. And opportunities wise, of course, there's these big leagues now and everything is coming. So I feel like there'll be more infrastructure now within the domestic level now and all that. So I feel like there will be more opportunity coming in the future for sure. So for everyone to work hard and to, if they really want to get their name out there, it's, I feel like it's open up for grabs now. Absolutely, man. And how do you, how do you envision your success, Ramon? What is, what does success look like to you in the next 10 years? Uh, where do you see yourself to set yourself up and how do you see, you know, contributing to, to the U S cricket? For me, I mean, inshallah, I, I've been envisioned myself, hopefully to re representing the nation. Of course, that's again, the first priority. And then of course, playing all these leagues and stuff and all over the world, you know, playing all these leagues, rubbing shoulders with the like best players in the world, already doing that here in these tournaments, getting the experience, getting a lot of like learning lessons from these guys and only to better my game, improve my game day by day. And yeah, pretty much. I don't have like a personal like set goal that, oh, I need to score these amount of runs or X amount of runs. It's about whatever comes to me, whatever opportunity comes to me and just doing it to the best ability I can. Absolutely. So who was, let, let me like ask this, who was your first, cricketing idol let's say like somebody that you really really looked up to and i know it's probably your dad but i'm talking like somebody at the international stage that you know you thought that hey i love this player this is how i want to perhaps play like one day right because i want to i want to envision i want to uh, understand like what your perfect envisionment is of you reaching you know the ultimate in cricket like what what does that look like for you is it you can compare it to, you know, any player that you may think that has reached that level, maybe some of your favorite players, but just for you, what does that look like? So some of the players you said, it's actually a few players, but now it's got to change since the game is so modern now. It's changed the way it's being played. But of course, the Prince, Sir Brian Lara, of course, that's the my favorite batsman. Say Dunver is a big one. Nowadays, it's uh, David Warner. Uh, I also like Nicholas Puran. So, I mean, it's a lefty thing for me because I'm a lefty. So, I got prefer watching uh, left-hand batsmen. But, um, of course, you said envisioning myself in the future. I would say Absolutely. playing Absolutely. till I retire. Um, and that's at a, like, older age. Playing the best cricket, the most competitive cricket I can play till I retire is probably the, what's I envision as, like, a successful career. Awesome, man. I mean, we wish you very good luck in that, Ramon. We're, uh, you know, we want to see you do well for for everybody again that's you know been part of your truly amazing journey this far yeah guys we're having a great conversation here we're almost getting to the to the end of it it's been a great conversation so are there any hobbies or fun facts you want to mention about yourself ramon i mean i love to eat it might not look that i love to eat because yeah i'm the love on the yeah but um love to eat sleeping is a big thing i love my rest so sleeping is a big thing as well traveling yeah. traveling is a big thing for me i love to travel favorite um, movie Ooh, putting me yeah. on the spot. That's awesome. I want to say favorite movie, but I'll say a, a TV show. I like the uh, Prison Break. Prison Break, yeah, that's a good show. I like that too. Yeah, Baller, so it's a binge show, man. You can binge that. Yeah. It's binge great. show for like what nine, nine, nine seasons. If uh, it just amazes me, the amount of like yeah. thinking and creative they had in that show is amazing. Have you seen Money Heist? Money Heist, yep, yep. I've seen that as well. Professor, yeah, it's just the how like the 
think of these shows yeah it's crazy man it's totally crazy you gotta be definitely like a genius to be even thinking in these shows yeah man seriously i mean these directors the creative directors is how they do it man so on the, on the channel i do some cricket comedy tape it's so hard to come up with like creative jokes man all the time because it's not easy and i'll sit down and i'll be like man let me come up with a script to, to do a video on not always easy man yeah. and i don't know how these guys think of it it's it's kind of nuts all right like, we're gonna do a quick round of rapid fire questions come on are you ready yes ready to go what is your go-to shot under pressure? I would definitely go with my flick shot. That's my favorite shot. And I um, have scored a lot of runs off that shot. Off On the pad, meat and drink, huh? <laughs> yes. He was the one cricketer you've always looked up to. I'd say uh, Brian Lara. Brian Lara. Toughest bowler face. Name the toughest bowler you've ever faced. I don't, I don't know the name, but he was in... I played him when I was, I believe, like 12 or 13. He was a left armor from... Um, Connecticut League, SETCA. Was it from Bridgeport? I think it was from Bridgeport, yes. Bridgeport or West Haven, one of the clubs. Yeah, okay. I mean, I got I to gotta find this out for you now. All right, let's, let's get, go to the next one. Which cricket ground in the world would you love to play on? Definitely the Lord's home of cricket. Pre-match ritual. Do you have any pre-match superstitions or rituals? Not really. I mean, I just listen to music, I guess. Listen to music and just... Having a calm mind and all that. Cheat meal after a big match. What's your favorite cheat meal? I'll say like a heavy. It's, it's whatever the mom cooks up, to be honest. Like a heavy meal. <laughs> like Nihari or something. Like a like a heavy dish. Nice. Nihari and naan? Yeah. Nihari and naan. good. Funniest teammate. Who's the funniest person in your team? I've had a few ones. I've had uh, Yasser, Yasser Muhammad. That's my boy. Ali, Ali Sheikh. I've had Majid Zubair as well. These guys. <laughs> funniest. One of the funniest teammates for sure. Favorite non-cricket sport? What's your favorite sport to watch or play outside of cricket? Hands down, basketball for sure. It's um just because it's like it's an indoor sport too, so you don't have to go be going out in the hot weather, ninety-five to hundred degrees. You're just inside playing on a court, so it's it's pretty fun and it's not too it doesn't get your skin color messed up a little bit. Basketball, no, no, no. Okay, basketball, basketball, yeah. Sweet man, you're a baller, huh? Yeah, hooping in the muzzle whenever I get the time. What's the most memorable moment of your cricketing career so far? Probably that under 19, the under 19 national championships I had where I got the best uh, batsman. That was probably the most because I worked. I, I know how, how hard I worked for that. So that's probably be so far my most memorable moment. Favorite cricket format, T20s, ODIs, or test match? What do you prefer? I'd go with T20 for sure. A shorter format. It's, it's more exciting. The game's more exciting that way. And it, I feel like longer formats, you kind of get switched off in the middle. You kind of lose focus and, you know, but T20, it's like you always have to stay in the game. It's a very quick and short format and anything can happen. So yeah, for sure, T20. Which international player would you love to have as a teammate? Probably go with Nicholas Puran. I'd probably just be be picking his brain the whole time. (laughs) Ask like learning from him. Yeah, he's a little man, but he can hit these. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he's something, man. I mean, his shots are just truly insane. That that was our quick fire segment with Ramon Dar. So that was our segment with Ramon Dar on the quick fire rapid questions. Again, if you're joining us on this great conversation with Ramon Dar, it's been an amazing conversation so far. Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel to meet more future cricket stars. And Ramon, you got any last words for the viewers, brother? It's been a great conversation so far, and. I'm sure if you got any last viewpoints or advice for the viewers, that'd be amazing. Yeah, just put in your mind. And of it's course, don't cheat the game, like always. Again, thank you so much, Ramon, for joining us, brother. It was a truly a wonderful conversation. And I can't wait to do it again, brother. And good luck to everything. And we're rooting for you. We're praying for you. And inshallah, man, you're going to be on that team next. And can't wait to see you in the U.S. colors. Again, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. It's been an amazing conversation on this very first episode of rising future stars and you met mr ramon dar here yeah guys please make sure to drop any of your comments into the into the description until next time guys this is nabil khan from the reverse scoop rising future star series signing off